In today's video, we're going to deal with the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde. The part in your syllabus is not the complete drama, it is just an excerpt from the drama, the importance of being earnest. We see five characters here, Algernon, also known as L.G. Moncrief, Gwendolyn Fairfox, Lady Augustus Bracknell, John Wording, who likes to call himself Jack in the countryside and Ernest in town, and Lane, the servant of Algernon. Algernon lives in the Half Moon Street and loves to play the piano. Algernon tells Lane, that he loves to play the piano with expression. When it comes to playing piano, playing with sentiment is his strength. Then we find that he had ordered uh, cucumber sandwiches for Lady Bracknell, Lady Augustus Bracknell. Algernon is a rich bachelor who lives life lavishly and he has this opinion that the lower class people should set examples for the higher class to follow. Jack enters and we find him addressing Jack as Ernest. He tells Algernon that when he comes to town, he comes for his own amusement but when he goes to the countryside, he takes care of other people's amusement. Jack has told Algernon that he lived in Shropshire, but Algernon does not believe him. And he asks, which part of Shropshire do you stay? And, and the details about his living in Shropshire. Algernon also informs Jack that Aunt Augustus and Gwendolen were visiting him. Jack is excited because he loved Gwendolen and Gwendolen loved him back. Algernon tells Jack that you have come to town to enjoy. Then why are you going to propose? Because proposing someone for marriage is pure business and it is unromantic. According to Algernon, to fall in love is romantic but to propose someone for marriage, he believes that to propose someone is not romantic. Algernon also tells Jack that Gwendolen will never marry Jack because according to him women never marry the man that they flirt with and secondly Algernon says he will not give his consent for Gwendolen, his cousin, to marry Jack because he had just found out that Jack has not been totally honest with him. Then Algernon out of the blue asked who is Cecily. Jack totally denied that he never knew anyone by the name Cecily. Algernon had found Jack's cigarette case on which there was Cecily's name. Jack tries to lie again that it was the name of his aunt. And then when Algernon asked, why does Cecily, why does your aunt Cecily call herself Little Cecily? At this Jack lies again and then says, so what, some aunts are big, some aunts are little. Then Algernon asks again, why does your aunt, why does your little aunt Cecily, who lives in Tunbridge, call you uncle? On that cigarette case was written from Little Cecily with fondest love. To her uncle Jack. Then Algernon says, besides this secret case cannot be yours because your name is Ernest not Jack and you are the most earnest looking person. Now Jack finally unfolds the, his secret that actually he has double identity. When he comes to town he goes by the name Ernest and when he goes to country he goes by the identity of being called Jack. He also tells Alg Algernon that he is the guardian of Cecily Cardew, who was the granddaughter of Mr. Thomas Cardew, who had adopted him and taken good care of him. He would run away from the responsibility of being a guardian by coming to town and calling himself Ernest. He would excuse himself from the responsibility of a guardian in a country, saying that his uh, brother Ernest, who lives in Albany, was in trouble. Hearing this, Algernon calls himself, you know what, you are a Bunburyist. According to Algernon, Bunbury is a term invented by him for double identity. Algernon is not very different from Jack. He also has a double identity. He also makes use of this um, imaginary person someone invalid. Algernon invented this non-existent Bunbury 
who often falls sick and lives in the countryside. Whenever he wanted to escape from situations and responsibilities, he would take the excuse that Bunbury is really sick and then he needs to visit him. He was using this excuse that Bunbury was sick to avoid uh, a dinner with Aunt Augustus that very evening. He was trying to avoid dinner with Aunt Augustus because of two reasons. Firstly, he had already dined with her on Monday and meeting with a relative once a week was more than enough according to him. Secondly, he knew that Aunt Augustus will make him sit next to Mary Farquhar, who always flirts with her own husband in public places. This was very uncomfortable to Algernon because it was like washing one's clean linen in public. That means it was like showing off. Jack tells Algernon that he intends to stop this pretentious um, double identity once he gets married to Gwendolyn. But Algernon tells him that in marriage, three is a company, two is none. If he did not have a double identity, then Gwendolyn will. If he does not have someone with whom he is lying to Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn will have another third person in her life. In this way, Oscar Wilde is trying to speak about the extramarital affairs that was very common during those days. Algernon makes a deal with Jack saying that he would take Aunt Augustus away for some time so that he would have the chance to propose to Gwendolyn if he will take him for dinner that evening at Willis.